With rising interest rates, does it still make sense to invest in dividend stocks? Is a money market fund returning more than 5% better than a dividend stock yielding only 3%? I'm going to answer these questions in today's episode. Hi, my name is Kanwal Sarai and welcome to the Simply Investing Dividend Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to cover the following four topics. First, we'll talk about the rising interest rates in today's current economic environment. Then, we'll talk about what are money market funds. Then, we'll look at some examples of money market funds and their returns. And then, we will compare a typical money market fund with a typical dividend stock and find out which is the better investment. Let's get started with our first topic, rising interest rates. And the biggest question most people have, and they've seen in the last 12 to 18 months, that interest rates have gone up. And they have, they may continue to go up, they may not, but let's take a look. So the question is, have interest rates gone up? And the short answer is yes. Let's take a look at the US fund rate in the last three years. And you can see the graph on the screen and you can clearly see that the rates have gone up consistently beginning at around February, March or middle of the year in 2022. Nevertheless, it was in 2022 where the U.S. Federal Reserve had started to increase the interest rates. And you can see on the graph prior to 2022, they were close to very close to 0%. And then we can see that the year uh, 2022 uh, finished off at around 1.5%, uh, 2%. Then the rates got, went up to 3%, 4%, and currently sitting at 5.33% as of this recording. And the situation is similar in Canada. If we look at the Bank of Canada, the interest rates in the last three years, again, you can see on the screen, the interest rates have gone up. And same thing, prior to 2022, they were sitting at almost 0% for many, many years. And the interest rates have gone up since then. And now, as of this recording, it, they are sitting at 5.25%, which is all good news for term deposits, CDs, or in Canada, GICs, and money market funds, because all of those types of investments have increased the interest rates that they are offering to investors. So now let's move on to our second topic of what are money market funds. And quite simply, a money market fund is a type of mutual fund that invests in high quality, short-term debt instruments and cash and cash equivalents. If you look at some of the instruments, uh, it's primarily US treasuries or T-bills or treasury bills. And uh, so that's what's inside of a money market fund. Now, there's some pros and cons to money market funds. So some of the pros are obviously it's very low risk, highly liquid, easy to cash it in, and they generally offer better returns than you'll find in a bank account. Now, some of the cons, they are not FDIC insured. There's no capital appreciation. The net asset value of the mutual fund or the unit price is always fixed and they are certainly sensitive to interest rate fluctuations and changes in monetary policy. So if rates continue to go up, then you'll find that the money market funds will continue to offer higher interest rates. However, if interest rates start to come down, then the money market returns will also start to come down. Now let's take a look at some of the returns. That's our third topic here. Let's see in the short term, as of this recording, what are some of the money market returns? And you can see up on the screen here, I've taken four typical examples of some money market funds. Now, the numbers are high, but we are only looking at the seven day yield, not the one year yield or the three year or five year. We're just looking at the seven day yield. So just as an example, you can see on the screen here, Fidelity Money Market Fund has a seven day yield of 
the T row US Treasury money market fund is at 5.4%. The Vanguard money market fund is at 5.27%. And the Fidelity government money market fund is sitting at 4.98%. Now, let's not forget each of these funds have an annual expense ratio. Now, I know some of the brokers say that there's no fee to buy them. That's absolutely true. They may offer no fees to buy mutual funds or index funds or ETFs, but these funds themselves have an annual expense ratio. This fee is deducted automatically from your investment in any of these funds. Um, we'll talk more a little bit more about the expense ratio later on. Uh, just as an example, the Fidelity Money Market Fund has an expense ratio of four, uh, 0.42%. Uh, the T row is at 0.3%, uh, Vanguard is at 0.11%, and the Fidelity Government Money Market Fund is also at 0.42%. Okay, so now let's get on to our main topic in this episode. And what we want to do here is we want to compare a typical money market fund to a typical dividend stock, and then figure out which investment is better which one is gonna offer a higher return. So I'm gonna show you the same slide we looked at before, which was the four examples of money market funds up on the screen, the seven day yield. And let's just take an average of the seven day yield. And you can see it's at 5.17%. Now remember, this is not a one year yield or a two or three year yield, it's a seven day yield, but still the number is quite high. Let's compare that to four typical dividend stocks. And what we're going to look at is the dividend yield. So Johnson & Johnson has a dividend, current dividend yield, as of this recording, of 3.08%. Coca-Cola is at 3.21%. Walmart is at 1.37%. And McDonald's is at 2.4%. Now, if you take the average here, you'll notice that it is not as high as the money market funds. The average dividend yield for these four dividend stocks is 2.52%. Now, if we compare both of the averages, again, what we're highlighting here is that the money market funds, the seven day yield is typically, as of this recording, higher than most dividend stocks. So it's at 5.17% versus 2.52%. Now the goal of this uh, topic in this episode is to compare a typical money market fund to a typical dividend stock. So to do that, we need to cover four things. Number one, we need to decide, okay, what are we gonna compare with? So which money market are we gonna select? Which dividend stock are we gonna select? Number two, what is the amount that we're gonna invest in? Number three, what is the time horizon? And number four, what is the rate of return? So we're gonna go through all four of these, but let's start with number one on the list. So for the purposes of this episode, and just to keep it simple, I know there's hundreds of money market funds to choose from. There's thousands of dividend stocks to choose from. We're gonna try and keep this simple and short. Uh, for this example, I'm going to select the Fidelity Money Market Fund. If anybody's interested, you can look up the details. Uh, the fund symbol is SPRXX. And we're going to compare it to Johnson & Johnson, which is a dividend stock. Just a quick little summary uh, of Fidelity Money Market Fund. The fund was started in 1989. It has a unit value, an NAV. Uh, of $1, right? So the price is fixed at $1 and the expense ratio, as we showed before, is at 0.42%. If we take a quick look at Johnson & Johnson, the, it's, an, uh, it's a US company. It was founded in 1886. The share price as of today, as of this recording, is $154.76 to buy one share. The dividend yield is 3.08%, and the company has had an incredible track record of consecutive years of dividend increases at 62 years. So the company has been consecutively 
increasing its dividend to the shareholders every single year for 62 years. So that's something very important to note. Now, let's go back to our four things that we needed here. So number one, we know which investments we're comparing with. So the Fidelity Money Market Fund, and we're going to compare it with the Johnson & Johnson stock. Number two, what is the amount invested? So for this example, we're going to go with $10,000 each. So imagine you had $10,000, you could invest it in Fidelity, or you could invest the same $10,000 in Johnson & Johnson. So that's the amount invested. We're going to keep it the same for both investments. The time horizon, for now, we're going to keep it at three years. Now, for those of you who've listened to all of our episodes, know that we are long-term investors long-term dividend investors. So when we think in terms of investing, our time horizon is typically 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25, 30 years, like very, very long-term. But for now, in this video, I'm gonna keep it at 3%. We just wanna keep it simple, and you'll see why in a couple of minutes, why we wanna leave it at three years. But that's, what, that's the time horizon we're gonna use in today's comparison. Next is the rate of return. So what is the rate of return we're going to use for Fidelity and what are we going to use for Johnson & Johnson? Now to answer that question, we need to figure out, well, what's going to happen to the interest rates in the next three years? Even this year, a lot of people, people are curious as to what is going to happen to interest rates. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, if interest rates continue to go up, that's going to mean that the money market funds are going to be able to provide higher returns. If the interest rates come down, then the returns on those money market funds will come down as well. So what is going to happen to interest rates? In the short term, in the long term, what is going to happen? So for this uh, couple of headlines, I did some research uh, most recently. In, on March 20th, USA Today reported, and this is an actual headline you can see up on the screen here, it says the Federal Reserve March meeting, rates hold steady, three cuts seen in 24 this year, despite inflation. Another headline from the Associate Press on the same day, March 20th, uh, their headline reads, Federal Reserve still foresees three interest rate cuts this year, despite bump in inflation. And one more headline from Reuters, uh, March 21st of this year, Feds see three rate cuts in 2024, but a more shallow easing path. So what's the common theme here? The common theme is that everyone seems to be expecting at least three interest rate cuts in the US this year in 2024. So. If that happens, well, then the money market funds are going to have lower returns. But that's fine. The biggest unknown here is we don't know when the cuts will happen and we don't know how much they will be cutting. But that is the expectation in the market today. So what are we going to use for the rate of return? We still need to put a number into our calculator to figure out what the total returns are going to be. So what I did is I took a look at the Fidelity Money Market Fund and I looked up the average annual returns for one year, for three years, five years, and 10 years. So you can see the one year return is pretty good. It's 5.02%. So that would be last year, 2023. The three year return is 2.38%. Five years is 1.83%. And the 10 year return for this fund has been 1.25%. So then I did the same thing with Johnson & Johnson, and you can see the numbers up on the screen. So Johnson & Johnson, the one-year return was not that great. It was negative 8.61%. The three-year return was 8.07%. Five-year return was 37.78%. And the 10-year return was 111.30%. Um, so just looking at these numbers alone, you can see that over the last 10 years, Johnson & Johnson has done incredibly well against 
the Fidelity Money Market Fund. Af uh, after five years, same thing. The return is much higher. 30, over 37% return versus 1.83% return over five years. Right, Johnson & Johnson versus Fidelity. The three-year return, also Johnson & Johnson does really well. In the one-year return, the mutual fund does better, the Fidelity Money Market Fund. So theoretically, I don't recommend this, but theoretically, you could invest in the Fidelity Money Market Fund just for a year and then pull your money out. But here's the thing. We just talked about three interest rate cuts are expected this year. So this requires a lot of timing, a lot of you got to watch the interest rates and watch when the announcements happen. And sometimes you'll see that the money market funds, the rates will fluctuate even before the interest rates are announced. Maybe, I'm not sure. But what you need to do then is any money that you put in the money market fund, you're going to have to watch it. You're, you may have to pull the money out before 12 months because of the interest rate cuts that are expected. So it's a little trickier and more complex if you're going to invest in a money market fund for the very, very short term, right? We're talking less than a year because that's the only time where you can see that it outperforms our dividend stock, Johnson & Johnson. Now, in reality, we're not just putting all of our money in one money market fund and we're not putting all of our money into one single dividend stock, right? In both cases, you should diversify. So you may own different funds, you may own different stocks. So the one year return, maybe the stocks do better than the money market funds or vice versa. It, you know, we don't know for sure. You'd have to look up all the numbers. So to keep today's episode simple, I'm going to just use the three year uh, time frame. That's our time horizon. Okay, we're going to stick with three years. Let's see how the money market performs against the dividend stock Johnson & Johnson. So now we have all the data we need. We have the two investments. We've got our money market fund. We've got Johnson & Johnson. Our amount invested is going to be $10,000 each. The time horizon, we're going to stick with three years. The rate of return, so we're going to use the average rate of return uh, for Fidelity, which was 2.38%. We're going to use the average rate of return over the last three years for Johnson & Johnson, which was 8.07%. Now, let's not forget the expense ratio. The money market fund has an expense ratio of 0.42%. Johnson & Johnson is a dividend stock. There is no expense ratio. Some of the brokers are now offering zero commissions. So you could buy Johnson & Johnson with zero commission. If not, then just deduct $5 or $8, whatever the commission is, from the total value that I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so the ending value after three years, Fidelity Money Market Fund, once we've subtracted the expense ratio, will be worth $10,599.60. Johnson & Johnson, over the same period, will be worth over $12,621. So that is a difference of 19.08%. So Johnson & Johnson clearly is the winner here. It's worth more. The investment in Johnson & Johnson over three years is worth more than what you would have received with the Fidelity Money Market Fund. Now, keep in mind, Johnson & Johnson has a current dividend, as of this recording, of $4.76 a share. The dividend yield based on the purchase price, if we go back three years, so had somebody bought Johnson & Johnson, had you bought the stock three years ago, your current dividend yield today, based on the purchase price, would be over 3%. If you went back five years and you purchased Johnson & Johnson five years ago, on January 1st, five years ago, your dividend yield based on the purchase price would be over 3.69%. And if we go back 10 years and you had bought Johnson & Johnson 10 years ago, not only would you have collected dividends over those 10 years, your current dividend yield based on the purchase price 
would be over 5.2%. So now you're making more money annually than a typical money market fund. So there's an advantage to buying the dividend stocks and then holding on to them because you take advantage of the increasing dividends coming to you every single year. And if you take those dividends and reinvest them into other dividend paying stocks, you can compound your growth even faster. And you can do this without selling a single share of your initial investment, right? So that's the advantage. And the other advantage we haven't talked about is capital appreciation, is as the stock price goes up, every time a company increases its dividend over the long term, the share price generally comes up and that also provides you with higher returns. And you don't have that capital appreciation with a money market fund. So having said all of this, I still think, I believe that in this example, Johnson & Johnson is still, is still clearly the winner. Now, like I said, the money market fund, perhaps it does better in, you know, if we looked at the last 12 months, it did better than Johnson & Johnson. But going forward, taking into account the potential interest rate cuts, taking into account dividend growth, dividend increases, and looking at the historical data, the last three years, five years, and 10 years, you can see that Johnson & Johnson should outperform the money market funds. So does this mean that you should go out and buy any stock that pays a dividend, just like Johnson & Johnson? And the short answer is no. There's a couple of more things we need to check here, right? Our approach to investing is to invest in quality dividend paying stocks when they are priced low. So not just at any price, they have to be undervalued and not just any stock, it has to be a quality dividend paying stock. So how do you know when you're looking at a stock that it's a quality stock? How do you know it's priced low? For that, I've created what I call the 12 rules of simply investing. This is your checklist. You have to make sure that a stock passes all of the 12 rules before you invest in it. If there's one failure, skip it, move on to something else. You can see the 12 rules up on the screen here. Rule number one, do you understand how the company is making money? If not, skip it, move on to something else. Rule number two, 20 years from now, will people still need its product and services? Rule number three, does the company have a low cost competitive advantage? Rule number four, is the company recession proof? Rule number five, is it profitable? Rule number six, does it grow its dividend? Rule number seven, can it afford to pay the dividend? Rule number eight, is the debt less than 70%? Rule number nine, avoid any company with a recent dividend cut. Rule number 10, does it buy back its own shares? Rule number 11, is the stock price low? Rule number 12, keep your emotions out of investing. So for those of you that are interested, I've created the self-paced online Simply Investing course. The course is divided into 10 modules. Module one covers the investing basics. Module two covers the 12 rules of Simply Investing. Module three, I show you how to apply the 12 rules using a Google Sheet. Module four, I show you how to use the Simply Investing platform. Module five, placing your first stock order. Module six, building and tracking your portfolio. Module seven, knowing when to sell, which is just as important as knowing when to buy. Module eight, reduce your fees and risk. Module nine, your action plan for getting started right away. And module 10, I answer your free, most frequently asked questions. I also have created the Simply Investing platform that applies these rules to over 6,000 companies in the US and in Canada every single day. So the platform is a really quick way to filter out and look at which companies you should consider for investing and which ones you should avoid. If you're interested in the course or the platform, write down the coupon code SAVE10, S-A-V-E-1-0, this coupon code is going to give you 10% off of the course and the platform as well. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We have a new episode out every week. Hit the like button as well. And for more information, take a look at our website, simplyinvesting.com. Thanks for watching.